that America refused to give the Negro any land. Through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. <laughs> Now, this is what we are faced with, and this is the reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we are coming to get our check. At the very same time that America refused to give the Negro any land. Hey, this is Dr. King again. He was trying to organize for the Poor People's Campaign. Nobody was listening to him. Any of y'all read, um, uh, come on, Rashid. What's that man's name, got a television show? He runs with Cornell. Tavis Smiley. Tavis Smiley. Any of y'all read his book, Kings, last year? I know a lot of people don't like Tavis, but that book was on point. He took the last year, literally calendar, and, and, and uh, day by day, accounted for the, what went on in Dr. King's life. To all the people who, wouldn't talk to him anymore. His own crew, SCLC, abandoned him. Nobody was listening. He had fallen out with the president by that time. And this is the conversation he's having before the Poor People's Campaign. Talk, running back to the history, saying that they owe us a check. And I always find it so interesting that when people listen to the, the, the March on Washington speech, they always want to hear the I have a dream piece. And they don't go back to the beginning where King said, we got, a, we got a bad check. We need to get that check paid. He was talking about money. Uh, that are word, reparations for what has happened to black people in this country. Uh, and that's why he's dead. When you start talking about the war machine that this country represents, you start talking about paying back people for the debts that owed, uh, that's very dangerous to talk. And one can die, like Walter Rodney. We talked about helping people in a genuine way. We don't live long after that happens. So what are we doing? Engendering healthy, sustainable land system, food systems. So I want to show you what we're doing to truly living well. And I hope that we can, we have, I hope there's going to be some questions. Close that out and open this. You the tech man, you want to help me get that up there? <laughs> talk about what they think ought to be done. We try to trump that by doing the work. When I go and ask for help for truly living well, I ask for help to do what we do better. Because uh, we're engaged, we're involved in the process. This site is down in the old historic King District. This is very early when we first got to this site. What we have done, my work is a pedagogy of transformation. We transform both people and places. You can see the skyline right there. This is across, uh, in terms of, of place, I think this has a pointer also. Oops, that's not it. Uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church, will be here. That's here, that's here, here. Auburn Avenue is right up here. Uh, old Ebenezer, the Miss Corner, King Center, so we're right downtown Atlanta, okay? We have six acres, it's four acres you see here. We also have two acres across the street where we grow food. And we have created a model for sustainable local food systems. And this is not the only way to do it, it's the way that I, we have decided we want to, to operate. 
We're a 501c3. We've been in our 10th year. We use quality local food production to build self-sufficient food secure communities. And we do demonstrate sustainable and economically viable solutions for helping people to eat and live better. And we grow stronger communities by connecting people with their food and the lands and education, training, job creation, and entrepreneurial development. We emulate nature. I think one of the problems we have is in part of the other development process that's taken around, that happens around the world, the introduction of all the hybrids, the GMOs, uh, BT cotton. You know, Africa's become a great uh, producer of, of cotton now. Not the biggest, we still got China as the number one producer, United States number two. But Mali in particular is growing a lot of cotton over there. And then what the set over tractors, all these chemicals, all these pesticides, and that's what's killing the people. And they're not emulating nature and using systems that will work, that have been proven, how they've been proven, just go out and look in the woods, anywhere in the world. Those trees grow just fine. There's no, no, there are no soil scientists, no plant scientists, there's nobody putting any fertilizer out there, chemicals, pesticides and things grow. We talk about saving the planet. I'm not worried about the planet. Mother Earth has been here for a gazillion years. It's human beings that need to be careful. We're going to kill ourselves. If you just go out and take any empty lot that you see, just leave it alone. What happens? It gets overgrown. Okay? The plants don't depend on us. We depend on the plants. The plants do just fine if we left them alone. But and, and then part of it, the, the science, we could spend hours talking about just the intelligence in the plant community. Um, I think today's more about the politics so. uh, of it. Stop thinking about it. We, we get, the plants can live on the sun by themselves. We can't. We have to get the sun through from just in the plants. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to emulate nature, quality. I think that, that for black people, the most revolutionary thing we can bring to any situation is excellence. <laughs> excellence. Whatever endeavor we do, is do it as well as it can be done. That's what we bring. That's revolution. So I demand that of anybody that's around me. I get to be a pain in the ass most of the time. Uh, and you'll see from the pictures, we have lots of diversity, teamwork, and uh, try to give people. I used to grow food. Today I grow people. So I want to provide a laboratory where folks can be engaged and, and, and do what they can do, live up to their potential, providing that opportunity. So we are a, a, a vital force for urban transformation. This new paradigm, many of the developers now, tennis courts and swimming pools are not the amenities that they used to be for a neighborhood. People want to have green space. You come to our space, which is not too far from here, but just the, the peaceful nature of what's out there. Uh, is great. We, uh, I'm trying to be an educator. I have a board of directors, large staff, hundreds of volunteers, thousands of volunteer hours. I just left the site down this morning. We got 60 people there today. We had 100 people out earlier this week. Come out, just want to spend time in the garden and put their hands in the dirt. You know, when you meet somebody that's kind of, kind of flighty and not well grounded, think about that. That's an agricultural term. Put your hands in the ground and get. Ground. Okay? That's what the earth will do for you. We have uh, we get money from public and private funders. Now, one of the things that's often said, well, how are you all sustainable? Are you be able to be self-sufficient in this work in urban agriculture? So no. And there's no reason for anybody to expect that we would be. If you heard Dr. King say, all agriculture in this country is subsidized at every level from the very beginning. Gave land to people, gave them money to grow the food. Created an extensive term. The University of Georgia is, has the fourth biggest research budget of all the land grant colleges, and they're here to support the chicken industry. Okay? So, and education is subsidized at all levels. So, urban agriculture, in order for us to succeed, and here in Atlanta, we have a very unique opportunity. We have, here, Atlanta is the greenest city in America by virtue of trees and open space. We have enough land, a million acres free. We take about 23,000 acres to provide all the fruits and vegetables we can feed all the population. Now that's not meat and grain. You've got to grow that in the country. The fruits and vegetables we can grow right here in the city if there's a will. And that's what we're working on with some of our policy work. I draw a circle for how we're organized. I like to think of a pond. You drop a pebble in the middle, the ripples go out. 
But rather than being hierarchical, we want to have people involved, uh, and that's, that's my view of how we're organized. Now, some of the young people probably argue that, okay, when they see me coming around. They said 80% of Americans live in urban areas. Did you know what? 80% of Americans live in, in urban areas. Uh, it's compared with 100 years ago, 95% of Americans live in rural areas. So there's been a big transformation. The Chinese are trying to bring 250 million people from the countryside into the cities to build a consumer society.